Ah, there you are. Little continuation of chapter 17, Ross Paul Dark. This is my book. We've got two novels in this book. It's Ross Paul Dark and a Melzer. It's a continuation of chapter 17. That night, the wind got up with a violence and blew unabated through the following day. The next night, about nine, news came that a ship was in the bay and drifting ashore between Nampara and Saul. Demelza had spent most of the afternoon, as she was coming to spend many afternoons when heavy rain stopped all but the most urgent outdoor work. Had Prudy been of an industrious turn of mind, she would have taught the girl something more than the neat but primitive sewing she now understood, and there was weaving and spinning to learn, the drying and dipping of rushes for making rush lights, but these things were beyond Prudy's idea of housecraft. When work was inescapable, she did it but any excuse was good enough to sit down and take off her slippers and brew a dish of tea. So soon after dinner, Demelza had sneaked off to the library. And this afternoon, by the purest chance, she made the greatest discovery of all. Just as a premature dusk was falling, she found that one of the big chests was not really locked, but only held by a trick glass. She lifted the lid and found the box full of clothing. There were dresses and scarves, three-cornered hats and fur-lined gloves, a periwig and red and blue stockings, a pair of ladies' green lace slippers with blue heels. There was a muslin neck scarf and an ostrich feather. There was a bottle with liquid in it that smelt of gin, the only intoxicant she knew, and another half full of scent. Although she had already stayed longer than usual, she could not bring herself to leave, and went over and over the velvet and the lace and the silk, stroking it and shaking out the crumbs of lavender. She couldn't put down the slippers with the lace and blue heels. They were too dainty to be real, the ostrich feather she sniffed and pressed against her cheek. Then she tied it round her neck and put on a fur hat and pirouetted up and down on her toes, pretending to be a great lady, with Garrick crawling at her heels. With darkness closing in on her, she lived in a dream until she woke and found she could no longer see and was alone in the sombre room with the draught blowing cold and rain seeping through the shutters. Frightened, she rushed to the box, pushed in everything she could find, and shut the lid, and slipped through the big bedroom and thence to the kitchen. Prudy had had to light the candles, and delivered an ill-tempered lecture, which to Melza, not yet anxious to go to bed, adroitly steered round, until it became a continuation of the story of Prudy's life. Hence the girl had only just gone upstairs and was not asleep when Jim Carter and Nick Vigus called in to say there was a ship in distress. When Ross, disturbed from his book, made ready to go with them, he found Demelza, a kerchief about her hair and two old sacks on her shoulders, waiting to ask that she might go too. I'm nearly disappearing off there. Okay, so that was just from chapter 17 of Ross Dark, a little bit about Demelza in the library. Hope you enjoyed it.